Welcome back, weirdos. How are you guys doing today? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm doing awesome. I hope you guys have some caffeine with you because this is going to be a long video. <laughs> I know that this was highly requested. You guys wanted a really long, in-depth, like start to finish, whatever, whatever. So that's what we're going to do today. I have this color here from Mystic Moon Dips. It is called A Thousand Wishes. My daughter named this color, Becca that is. She wanted this color very much badly. Um, this was inspired by a manning I did a million and a half years ago with a mix that um, I had that's not sold anywhere. And I know a lot of you guys still to this day, even though that video was like over a year ago, still comment wondering where that color came from. Mystic Moon made it for me. <laughs> so we're going to put this on my nails. I'll leave a picture over here somewhere of the manning I'm talking about I did on Becca's nails. Um, it was like a kind of like a baby boomer, but with a glitter base to it. I don't know. It was adorable. So here's what the game plan is. And there will be timestamps down below so you can skip around to whatever portion of the video you need to get to. But we're going to cover peel base. We're going to cover application. We're going to cover filing. We're going to cover nail fees. We're going to cover removal later of the peel base. This is going to be all inclusive, everything you need. And it's also going to be kind of a part two to my previous dip powder problems video. I'm answering all your questions, your most commonly asked questions. So we're going to get right into it. Um, I'm going to start with my peel base application. I use UNC peel base. I have used this peel base forever and here is how I apply it. I'm going to take a generous amount of peel base. This is not like a goopy amount, but it's not a thin coat. I'm applying this as if it were like nail polish top coat. And I'm applying it to the entire nail, cuticle to free edge. I might leave the teeniest, tiniest little margin near my cuticle area. And that's because I want my dip base to overlap it just a little bit. And I'm talking like less than a hairline, super duper small. And then I'm going to let this dry for a good seven to 10 minutes. I give it a little extra time just because I do put on a thick layer of it. And on my nails underneath that, I have acrylic and I did it. I didn't do it with monomer or anything, just dip acrylic. It's iGel Beauty medium pink. I did two dips of that over my nails and I did buff it ultra smooth. I did top coat it initially, but over the course of weeks, um, top coat is probably gone because I do buff it as prep in between every single mani that I do. So, but it is ultra smooth. And if you're using, you're using peel base, you do want a super duper smooth surface. So we're going to get into removal towards the end of the video. I also want to add that you don't need acrylic under your UNT peel base or any peel base for that matter. You can use peel base on your natural nail. You can use it over builder gel, over any overlay or none at all, just so you know. And I would use it the exact same way. So we're going to talk about application type stuff. Um, one commonly asked question that I've gotten a lot is, is acrylic the same thing as dip powder? 99.9% .9 yes. It is formulated the exact same way. Acrylic is dip powder. A dip powder is acrylic. The only difference that I have found sometimes, and this isn't even true 100% of the time, but sometimes, um, dip powder is or can be more finely milled. And the reason for that is acrylic, when you use it with monomer, that liquid, you know, helps to dissolve, if you will, the acrylic powder. But when you're using it with a dip system, either with resin or with gel, there's not really that option for the acrylic to dissolve because it's not being used with a thin liquid, you know, it's being used with glue or with gel. So the powder is more finely milled so that it can absorb much more easily into whatever liquid you're using it with. So yes, the short answer is Dip is acrylic, acrylic is dip, <laughs> period. We're going to talk now about some lifting stuff. Now, if you're not a peel base user, that's totally fine. I know most of you probably are not because peel base is really more for people like me who do their nails very frequently and are not expecting a two week long mani. So if you're having lifting issues and you're not using peel base, there are a few reasons for that. Right now I'm going around my nail with my cuticle stick. Just want to touch on this real quick. Um, I've had people ask me if I'm going on my nail or on my skin or how I'm using that. And 
you can do whatever you need to do to get dip off wherever you don't want it. If it's on your skin, go, you know, take it off your skin. If it's on part of your cuticle area that you maybe have, I don't know, bled into, bled, no, not bled, <laughs> flooded, that's what, <laughs> what? If you flooded your cuticle, you can go in between the product and your skin and clean that out. There's no rhyme or reason really to using an orange wood stick. It's really, you use it the way you feel like you need to. It's meant to clean away product before the product has set. Anything that happens after the product is set, you need to use a file to remove. So anyway, back to lifting. Um, I have found through my own personal experience that nails can lift primarily if for two reasons. One, if the prep routine that you're using isn't working for you or body chemistry. Some people just by nature have more oily nail beds and that's okay. Um, what I have found to work for prep purposes at least is you want to make sure there's no dead cuticle on your nail because that can cause lifting. Also, if you're, you, if you're going for a longer lasting mani, you do want to remove the shine and create a slight bit of texture on your nail for the base to adhere to. You can do this with an e-file, with a hand file, but I find the key is to be as gentle as possible and do not buff. You definitely want to use a file because buffing will create a smooth surface and the dip products will have a hard time adhering to it. So you definitely want to use a file. I would suggest either a 150 or a 180 grit. And again, you don't want to apply any pressure. Very, very gentle. Even with a e-file, if you want to use a sanding band, super gentle, medium grit uh, sanding band. Another thing that can cause lifting, again, is oily nail beds or weak nails. If your nails are super thin and flexible, that can cause lifting because acrylic is hard. If your nails are flexy, they want to move. The two just don't get along very well. So I have found that putting down a layer of your base product first and letting that dry completely can add that little bit of stability to your nail that may decrease lifting. If you have oily type nail beds, definitely doubly dehydrate. And I have heard this before that people are using alcohol to dehydrate and that's fine. If you don't have oily nail beds but if you do you need something a little stronger and that's where a good dehydrator comes in you can make your own dehydrator essentially is a 50 50 mix of alcohol and pure acetone but you got to be careful about what acetone you're using some acetones have additives like either water or some sort of oils in it you don't want any of that on your nail you want to make sure you're using 100 percent pure acetone with your dehydrating mix of liquid um, another thing that i should mention and i've heard people do this and i'm gonna sit here and disagree with it maybe it's an unpopular opinion i understand but i'm gonna say it anyway because i do what i do and i say what i say but nails absorb water nails are kind of like sponges in that sense so if you wash your hands before you do your nails your nails are going to be saturated in water which means they are going to expand after you complete your dip application and your nails are dry for a couple of hours, a couple of days, whatever it may be, your nails are going to, hopefully not a couple of days, hopefully you've washed your hands and showered at some point. But anyway, a couple of hours later, um, your nails are going to retract and lose that water. And that shrinkage of the nail can cause your product to lift or pop off. So it would be my best advice to not wash your hands for at least like an hour before you do your product application. And this is for dip, for acrylic with monomer, for gel, for any type of overlay. Don't wash your hands. Give it like an, an hour before you do your dip application. Don't touch any water. And after you've prepped your nails, try not to touch your nails with your fingertips because your fingertips can have oils on them that you can transfer to your nail plate and that will contaminate your nail with oil and can cause lifting. So, now that I've gotten into peel base and lifting and cleaning up your cuticle, we're going to talk about getting bulky with your nails, especially for you ladies that have short nails, members of the nub club, like I have been plenty of times, bulk. There are a couple of ways to get around this, um, and it really depends on what method of dipping you're using. I know there are so many different techniques, like the apex me method, three-quarter method, whatever else is out there. I find for me and this is going to be trial and error for a lot of you guys i like two dips of color 
and one dip of clear. That for me is like my perfect combo for my like quote active length nails. They're not long by any means, but they're not like nubbies. They're like, I'm going to call them active length. I don't know. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. But that's like my perfect combo. Now, if you have shorter nails and you're finding that you're getting product that looks bulky, especially on your cuticles, um, cuticle area or on your sidewall area, you may want to consider doing your first dip just shy of your cuticle and just shy of your um, sidewalls. The center of your nail it should be the thickest and then you know it should taper down towards your cuticle and your sidewall so perhaps doing your first dip with that with that being mentioned you know shy of your cuticle shy of your sidewalls just a little bit and then your second dip cover your entire nail that might give you a little less bulk in those areas and of course when you're filing you can take down your bulk i would always recommend capping in clear that way you have that buffer layer between the file and your color if you find that you are over filing or over buffing stop filing and buffing <laughs> i know it's easier said than done um, but if you are, have a clean application and this takes practice very, very much practice. Um, if you have a clean application, you shouldn't have to do too much filing and buffing, but I do find that it also can depend on the products you're using. So if you're dipping and you feel like everything's going fine, but your nails are coming out lumpy and bumpy and uneven and you have to do a ton of filing, you may want to consider trying a different dip base liquid or trying different powders. Because again, that all do, it's such a personal preference, which is why when people ask me what my opinion is on the best dip base or the best powders, um, I, I wish I could tell you, but I can't. I don't have that kind of information because those are your nails and you have to make those decisions for you. I can only sit here and speak to what works for me. And when it comes to dip products, I very much like the Sparkle & Co liquids. They work well for me. They're um, not terribly thin, which I know not a lot of people are into. I personally love it because I find that I don't flood my cuticles and my sidewalls like I tend to do when I use thin liquids. Also, I like the dry time of the sparkle liquids. I find it's more on the medium to quick dry side, which makes for a quicker application for me. But if you're doing any kind of nail art, like an ombre or a French design, you may want to consider trying a thinner slower drying liquid because that will give you more time to work on your nail design another really commonly asked question that i've received is how do you keep your base brush from getting weird and stringy and goopy and i find this happens when you contaminate your brush with powder now i don't know if you guys have noticed over the course of the last few minutes but occasionally and i should do this more often than i do but occasionally you'll see me apply my base and wipe my brush off on a paper towel that is to get rid of any powder that may be on the brush or in my case i'm working with a glitter dip that's going to get rid of any glitter that might be stuck in the brush does it work 100 percent of the time no, you have to be super careful. And that's why getting rid of the excess dip powder in between layers is so super important. I do like to use a fluffy brush to do that. If you prefer using a stiffer bristled brush, like the one that I use for my clear dip powder, which you're gonna see here in just a minute, um, you can use that too. But definitely wait until your base sets a little bit before you go in with a scrubby brush. And that's gonna bring me to my next topic, which is getting bubbles or white specks or cloudiness in your finished mani and i'm gonna go off on a limb and say that's more likely than not due to clear dip powder um, if you're using clear dip powder which i always recommend it's going to protect your color and it's going to give your nail strength you do want to dust off with a fluffy brush like you see me doing right now and i'm doing two things with this i'm getting off excess but i'm also making sure that my base is set and then I'm taking this scrubby manicure brush. I get them on Amazon. They're in my storefront. And I'm scrubbing like it's my job. Get rid of as much access as possible. Look at the difference between this one and this one. You can see clearly there's a huge difference in clarity. And that's going to make the biggest difference when you're applying your top coat. So scrub off that access and then activate. Okay? <laughs> trust me. Trust the process. This is what has been working perfectly for me since I've been trying it. And I've done this over all sorts of colors, light, dark, white, black, glitter, whatever, even like chunky glitter. 
which I, um, you guys may have seen my chunky glitter application video. I'll leave it in the cards for you if you have not, but I did an encapsulation with clear dip powder over chunky glitter and the clarity was absolutely beautiful. So, so far this has been working really well for me. I always do two layers of activator and I'm going to tell you why. I do two layers and this is another question that I had. Um, I had an experience a while back with dip powder while I applied one layer of activator and then I was filing chunks of dip off my nails. I'm seasoning my nail file by the way, taking off the hard edges to a new nail file. Great if you don't want to cut yourself. Um, back to, what was I talking about? <laughs> activator. Um, activator cures your dip base and your dip top. So you need to put on activator in order for your nails to harden up ready to file. I like two coats of it. It's like, it, it's a little bit of security. I know my nails are cured and I tap them before I file. Of course, they make a clicky sound. You know, they're hard enough to file. So we're going to get into shaping. Um, this is going to vary depending on how you like your nail shaped. For me, I like a square nail on my little active length nails, if you will, perhaps slightly tapered, but it's not a tapered square. I'm not going to call it. It's not, <laughs> it's not tapered enough to be tapered. The key here is to go very slow, work side to side, back and forth, and get them the way that you like them. I put a towel down just so you can see a little bit better on a dark background, but I do find the key to this is making sure your file is totally straight and that you're not rocking it a little bit because that will create a curve to your nail that maybe you don't want. If you like the curve to your nail, rock that file all night long. But for me with my super straight square nails i try to keep my file as straight as possible this is the 100 side of the 180 100 grit file i use the 100 side to do my shaping my preliminary shaping and then i'll use the 180 side to do my contouring a little bit later so i do file a couple of different ways as you can see i go across the nail side to side i also go up and down to make sure they're flat and i look at my nail from literally all angles as you can see i look at it from my perspective from that perspective <laughs> from a side perspective because i want to make sure they're shaped and this can be time consuming i understand however i find the more time you take doing your filing and shaping especially when you're trying to figure out how to do it this is going to save you time in the long run because you're going to get used to having a certain routine and it'll become second nature to you. Like I, I don't even really think about how I file my nails anymore. I just kind of do it. Um, again, if you have differently shaped nails, you'll want to contour that to how you like your nail shaped. If you want them a little more tapered, bring the file slightly in instead of having it like parallel to your sidewall. If you like a, I don't know, coffin nail, taper it even more on the free edge. If you like a rounded nail or even rounded corners, they call it like a squoval, just bring those corners slightly rounded, no big deal. But again, it's something you wanna take your time with and try not to file one side of your nail too much. You wanna go back and forth side to side so that your sides are even and your nails kinda sorta match, you know? I'm gonna go with my e-file now. I know that a lot of you guys have a fear of e-files and I understand because I was one of you. I was, I was there. I was terrified. It was a big, scary machine and I knew I was going to hurt myself. And you know what? I did. I hurt myself plenty trying to learn how to use it. But I find for me, and again, everyone has different preferences as far as what kind of files you like to use, what kind of bits you like to use. I really only use my e-file to get my cuticle line the way I like it. You don't need to use any file for this. It's my preference, but you're welcome to use a hand file. Um, you can use a regular 100, 180, like I was using earlier. You can use a skinny metal file, which is actually great for the cuticle line. And as you can see what I did here, I did contour that cuticle line. So it blends down into my cuticle area. That's going to give your nail that nice curve up on top. And it's also going to prevent lifting, lifting, as I mentioned, I don't know if I talked about it earlier, but I'm going to talk about it again. If I did, um, that can be caused by bulky product. And I find that even if your dip application is not perfect, even if you do your dip application and you find that it is bulky in certain areas, doing your contouring when you file can really make a huge difference. And again, I do that with my hand file and my e-file. You're going to see me contour with my hand file in just a little bit, but I like to use the e-file to get into my cuticle area. 
And I, I just round it out and blend down slightly. I, I blend down slightly the um, sidewalls of my nails as well because that also can get a little bit bulky. And I'm gonna do this for all of my nails. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna get to another one of your commonly asked questions. I did see a lot of questions about how to get all of your nails to kind of match and look related. <laughs> and I know this can be frustrating and this is why I think it's so important to be super slow and intentional with how you're filing your nails. If you go very slowly, do one side a little bit, the other side a little bit, I think that's gonna really, really help with the matching of your nails. And something that I have found in my own personal experience that really contributes to nails not looking like they match, I'm going to call them related, <laughs> they need to look like sisters, right? Not cousins, um, is when you overfile one of your nails. And I think that's why it's so important to take your time, to really take your time and not file one side of your nails too much. Because I find with the mistakes that I have made, if I file or overfile one side of my nail, then I got to go to the other side and file that one in too. And eventually you have one nail that's looking like a coffin and then all of your other nails are looking like square and you're like, well, I guess they're all coffin now. <laughs> so that's what I find to be the most helpful. And I know it's not a great answer and I apologize for not having a better one, but really taking your time and going super slow and toggling back and forth between the sides of your nails can really, really help in making sure that your nails all look pretty much the same. Are mine perfect? No, but how many times have you guys heard me say perfection is an illusion? It doesn't exist. It's just, can they look close enough alike to pass as sisters? Most days. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys are new to my channel. If you are, hi, welcome to the party. I'm Marla Chris. I am not a nail tech. I am not a nail professional in any kind of capacity. I do DIY nail stuff. If you're into this kind of content, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you as part of the Manny fam. If you learned something or like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up. It actually really helps me out. And my last little announcement for the day, uh, I do have a Facebook group. So if you feel like you might need some super duper support and empowerment from amazing humans, hop over to the Facebook group. I'll leave the link in the box for you guys. As you can see, I've gotten into my contour routine. I'm using the 150 grit. <laughs> finally got it right. <laughs> the 150 grit side of my nail file. This has been a 150 the whole time, by the way. The 100, 150. There was no 180. I don't know where I got that from. Um, this is what I'm going to do to blend in any harsh lines that I may have created from filing and shape for from shaping really, or from e-filing. I'm going to blend everything together so everything is super smooth and tapered and rounded and curved. I'm blending further down my cuticle area so there's no like ledge in the back of my nail like that. I'm also tapering down towards the free edge because you want the middle part of your nail to be the thickest and your cuticle and your free edge to be thinner. So I want to taper down slightly my free edge of my nail as well. And I'm just going to do this for all of the nails. Another commonly asked question I had, which I'm gonna to get to here in a sec when I break out my buffing block, was for those of you who use gel polish over your dip or gel polish top coat over your dip, I've had a lot of questions about why that peels and how to prevent it. And I'm gonna give you a couple of tips that I have found helpful in my experience with gel top coat. And in case you're new to the party, I am gonna be using dip powder top coat in this Manny as I have a newfound appreciation for it. But for a long time, I was a gel top coat kind of girl. And what I have found is that gel really requires a textured surface to adhere to. If you're buffing your nail, you're smoothing out all of those scratches that you've created with the file. And that's gonna make it really difficult for any kind of gel to adhere. Gel base will help you. That has a tack to it, so it will grip onto your top coat or to your polish. However, I find that skipping the buffing altogether is a good plan. You want to rough it up with your nail file like you see me doing here and then skip the buffing all together so it's nice and rough and textured. If you want to do buffing, because this is something that I did all the time when I was doing gel top coat, I love to buff my nails. I don't know if it's like I feel incomplete if I don't or if I just prefer to not have scratches in my nail because sometimes if they're deep enough, you can see that through top coat and it's not pretty. So if you need to buff your nail, my best recommendation would be to use a gel primer. I have used the Mia Secret Extra Bond Primer. It works great. Young Nails Protein Bond works really well too. They recommend using two coats of that under gel. 
or you can and either one <laughs> you can use gel base um gel base underneath gel top i have found in my personal opinion can leave the nail looking a little bulky and it can distort your shape a little bit especially if you're capping your free edge which i'd recommend doing if you're going to buff your nails so primer is what i would lean towards but if you feel like you need that extra security to keep your gel and your gel polish from peeling i would definitely advise doing a primer and then a gel base coat and then get into your polish and your top coat and all that fun stuff. But I'm gonna use dip top coat today. Another commonly asked question that I've gotten is how to prevent your free edges from chipping, whether you're using gel top coat, regular top coat, dip top coat, whatever. And from what I've learned and from the research that I've done on this, because I, I've had this issue myself, there are a few things that you can do to prevent your free edge from chipping. One, it could be that your product is simply too thin, so you may want to consider either not filing as much on your free edge or adding an extra dip of product. But I've also learned that chipping on your free edge is most common when you have square nails. And I believe that's because, you know, corners of your nails take a little bit of a beating just in general everyday wear and tear, but also there's more real estate on your free edge when you have square nails as opposed to having like almond or stiletto nails, which makes sense. So that's a consideration if you're trying to avoid the chipping on your free edge. I'm going in now with my activator. I did de-dust and you do need activator if you're using dip top coat. As I mentioned earlier, activator is what cures your base and your top. So in order for your top coat to cure down and be glossy and dry quick, you need to add this layer of activator. It seems completely redundant and useless, but trust the process. I don't know the science, but it works. I do one layer of that, and now I'm gonna let it sit for maybe about a minute. Some companies will tell you to wait two minutes or five minutes or one minute or whatever. I have never had to do that. I've always just waited 30 seconds to a minute, and now I'm gonna take a lint-free wipe. You don't need to use a lint-free wipe. I just happen to have them. You can use a paper towel, and I'm going to kind of rub it in if you will i'm not i'm not rubbing anything in the activator is dry but uh, i feel like rubbing it in and this is kind of key this is going to help prevent your top coat brush from getting hard if you're using dip top coat if you're using gel top coat you do not need this layer of activator so now i'm going to go in with my dip top coat i know this is a difficult topic for a lot of people because dip top coat can be very particular and i find sparkle works absolutely beautifully i've never had a problem as long as i've been using it which granted it has not been that long but i've done a good amount of mayonnaise with it with zero issue so my first layer of dip top what <laughs> dip top coat has to be relatively quick because you are putting that brush in contact with activator two or three quick swipes on the nail wipe off that brush after it touches the nail before it goes into the bottle and that will help prevent contamination of your dip liquid so let that go for about i don't know 10 to 15 seconds it's going to start looking a little bit wrinkly not too glossy and now we can go in with our second coat this is going to be your glossy coat and this is the glossy 2.0 from sparkle i've been asked what the difference is i'm not entirely sure as far as formulation goes but in comparison to the original, this one does seem to have a little more gloss and it's a little less finicky. It behaves very, very well. This second coat, you can take a little bit more time, be more detailed, cap your free edge. You don't wanna dawdle or over apply this by any stretch, but it's a little bit more forgiving. And I am still wiping my brush off after each nail before returning the brush to the bottle because I do not want to contaminate my liquids. Contaminated liquids are virtually impossible to fix. I've tried using brush saver with dip top coats and I have found it only makes the problem worse and not better. So unfortunately, if you wind up contaminating your, your brush and your bottle, brushes can be replaced, but if the bottle gets stringy and goopy, there's very little you can do to save that. So I find prevention is the best I don't know, offense, defense, something. <laughs> These are the finished nails. I'm gonna see if I can get through one more of your commonly asked question. And if you have any questions that I did not touch on, I'm gonna leave my original video up in the cards for you to reference. Um, or you can leave a comment here and I might do a part three if that seems necessary. Um, I'm gonna go in with my cuticle oil while I'm doing that. Let me get to another question. Two that I really wanna talk about, I'm gonna try and get through them super quick. 
Can you mix and match powders and liquids or even different liquids like different base and different activator? Yes, 100%. I have used so many different combinations between dip base, dip, dip, what? No, I didn't say that. Dip <laughs> activator and dip powders and I've never had any issues. So I'm gonna say, yep, mix and match all you want. Uh, the last thing I wanna touch on is what has changed since my last dip powder problems video? The only thing that I have really changed is the grit of file that I use. I used to contour with a 100 grit file, which is way too harsh. I was filing off products like crazy. So if you have an issue with over filing your dip powder, I would look at the grit that you're using and maybe go up a grit a little bit. If you're using a 150, use a 180 and that might help you. So now that I've gotten my cuticles and my skin rehydrated, we're gonna go outside because something that you guys really wanted to know about is how I take my nail fees. Welcome to my backyard. <laughs> that tree right there is my nail fee tree. This is every time you see me with my nails and my photos like on Instagram and on here, this is where I'm at. This is my backyard. I am wearing a denim jacket. That's just what I'm using right now for my nail fees. I love using something with sleeves because I find that the middle part of your hand isn't super attractive. So I like something with a sleeve. But dealer's choice. This, I've seen so many people using these like pterodactyl claw nail fee positions. And I find for me, and what you see all the time, is I relax my hand as much as I can. Whatever position your hand naturally lays in is going to most likely look the most attractive. And for me, naturally, my hand kind of, I don't know, it goes into itself. So that's how I take my nail face. And like you can flip this around into so many different type of types of positions. Um, if you can see, this is the shape that I'm making with my hand. I don't wanna do this. This looks super unnatural to me. And I just don't think it looks flattering on a lot of, Daryl, stop hissing at your sister. It doesn't look flattering on a lot of hands. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover up the center of my hand get my hands into a very natural position, maybe adjust where my fingers are ever so slightly, but it's just gonna be super natural and then tilt forward. And this is not gonna be comfortable at all. You're pretty much like about to attack your own face. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. See, as you can see, my arm is straight out, but my wrist is bent. So that's, this is literally how I take my nail face. I kind of make this shape with my hand. So my thumb is just touching the side of my index. And when you flip it around, it just gives this very natural, very feminine, and you can adjust your fingers to however, whatever mood you're in. I don't know. That's how I take my nail fees. <laughs> how do you guys take your nail fees? I don't really, I don't really do props. I used to, but not so much anymore. So now that you've seen me do my nail fees, we're going to fast forward to about four or five days in to wearing this mani. And sadly, it's time to go because I have more things that I need to film. So we're gonna do peel base removal. I'm gonna leave um, a video up in the cards. It was a specific peel base removal mani, but I'm gonna show you again because you guys wanted to start to finish and that's what we're gonna do, start to finish. I'm gonna start by filing the free edge and essentially the whole perimeter of my nail because I wanna break the seal that was made by my dip top coat. That's pretty much what's holding the Manny intact right now because I did use peel-off base coat. If you are not a peel-off base coat person, you have two options, as I see it, um, for removal. You can do the soak-off, and I'm gonna leave a video for you that is how I do my soak-off removal. It's super quick, super easy. It takes me literally seven minutes to soak off my nails. I mean, you can do both hands at the same time, but let's say seven minutes per hand if you do them separately, so less than 15 minutes total for soak off. I'll leave that in the cards. Um, if you don't want to use acetone and you don't want to use peel base, what you could do is use a foundation on your nails like I have. I have that, you know, acrylic foundation under my peel base. You can do the same exact thing, but instead of using peel base, just dip over your foundation. And then when you're ready to change, you can just file off the color and still have that foundation there. So at least it protects your natural nails, you know? But for me, we're doing peel base removal because that's what I've got going on. I filed the perimeter of my nails. I pushed back my cuticles and now I'm gonna go in my cuticle area because as you guys can probably remember, I did overlap slightly the peel base with my dip base. So I'm gonna file into that a little bit and try and break that seal up near the cuticle area. That way there's no product giving me a hard time. But as you will see coming up, I had a bit of a struggle 
that resulted in a bit of an injury. <laughs> and you're going to see it all happen. Although I, I'm, there's no blood and guts. I promise it won't be, it won't be gory. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to you guys. It wasn't that bad. I am incredibly dramatic. So take what I say with a grain when it comes to injury and stuff like that. So after I've gotten everything filed, I'm going to drop on a good amount of cuticle oil right in my cuticle area. And this is hopefully going to lube stuff up a little bit. That's going to make popping off these peelies super easy. And this usually works pretty well. There are times where your peelies are just being stubborn. Sometimes we all have bad days, you know, I do too. In the case of stubborn peelies, you can go back and file a little bit more as you're going to see me do here in a little bit. Or I found an alternative solution would be after you do your filing and you do your cuticle oil, if they're still being stubborn, you can soak your nails in some warm soapy water for a few minutes, which actually feels quite nice if you ask me. And that will activate that water-based peel base and should help remove much easier. As you can see, some of these come off pretty easy. Some of them give me a hard time. I'm gonna let you watch for a minute and I'm gonna come back in just a sec and I'm gonna tell you what mistakes were made. <laughs> I'll be right back. As you can see, I had a bit of an issue with the peel base and my overlay. I tried to rip off my peel base and took a little bit of my acrylic underneath with it, which is also why I highly suggest if you're gonna use peel base, have an overlay on your nails so that what I ripped off isn't actual nail. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that here in a minute. And it's going to very closely resemble how I do my fill-ins with my overlay. I'm gonna let you keep watching for just a bit and I'll come right back. If you guys saw my last peel base removal video, then you probably remember me telling you to not use a cuticle pusher to do this job. You're going to find out why. <laughs> As you can see, I am struggling a little bit to get the peely off of my nail. And I don't even know if you guys are going to notice the moment it happens. I don't know if you did or not, <laughs> but I wound up stabbing myself in the thumb with the cuticle pusher. I didn't, I mean, I felt it, but I didn't think I cut myself. Um, and I did. And you're gonna see that I finally notice it later on in the video. <laughs> what I'm gonna do now is there were a little bit, little bits of Peely that were just super attached and I didn't wanna force it anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm taking this ceramic bit, which I don't use very often. I only use it for this purpose really when I'm doing fill-ins. And I'm gonna uh, file off any excess product that's left on the nail. And I'm also gonna file around this area that I accidentally ripped off and get it prepped and ready to repair. And again, that's gonna really closely resemble how I would do my fill-ins or how I do my fill-ins rather. This is exactly how I do it. I use this bit. You don't have to use this bit, but I actually really like it for getting around lifting. Um, I'm going around the lifting, not over the lifting, if that makes sense. And it kind of just flakes off, which is super duper convenient. And we're gonna get all ready for said fill-in. And again, I still don't notice the injury on my thumb. I don't even think you guys can notice at this point. I will notice it later on when I file. And can you see it? I can't, I can see it. <laughs> it's not that bad that I didn't want to risk getting like dust particles in there 
after I noticed, of course. So you'll see me come back with a band-aid at some point. So now what I'm doing is I'm getting myself prepped up for my next mani. And that includes cleaning off my cuticle area. I just want to make sure there's no dead skin, no excess product, nothing. And I'm being super gentle with that cuticle bit. I'm going to take my fancy schmancy dusting brush and I'm going to remove dust so I can see exactly how I am with my preparation. And now I'm going to go ahead and fix that little tear. So this is the dip that I use on my overlay. It's the iGel Beauty Medium Pink. And I'm going to treat this like a fill-in. This is exactly what I would do if I were doing a fill-in right now. I'm just going to apply base to the area that needs the product. So if you were doing a fill-in, you would apply this just to your cuticle area, wherever you need the product. You can overlap slightly because we're going to file it later. And then I'm going to dip into my pink dip powder. This is a very super sheer natural French pink dip powder. I love it over the natural nail. Even if I'm walking around without like a mani on and I just have this overlay on, it looks super pretty, super natural, super clean. I prefer it to clear only because if, you know, nails discolor over time, especially if you use dip powder a lot, it can stain your natural nail sometimes. And I just find that the pink does a really great job of making the nails look super healthy even if they're a little discolored from staining or whatever. So I prefer the pink, but if you want to do a clear overlay or a builder gel overlay, whatever you want to do, I'm going to leave a builder gel fill in video for you guys as well, because I've done that in the past. Um, but I'm doing two dips of this and that's it. I'm not bothering with a clear cap or anything like that because it's just my overlay. And I'm going to file and buff it down. So I'm going to let you guys watch for just another bit and I will come back. As you saw, I finally noticed the injury and went and got myself a bandage. <laughs> In my house, my options were My Little Pony and SpongeBob. So I went with the My Little Pony to save the day. And again, I realized it was such a minor injury, but I didn't want to risk getting it infected. So I did wash it out. I disinfected it, threw the bandage over it. Hopefully it didn't get any filing dust in there. And now that I am bandaged and ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and just smooth out that little repair job that I did. And this repair job will work if you have a situation like mine, or if you have any lifting that you need to fix, fill-ins. It will also work if you manage to over file your dip color. You can always do a little bit of a patch job. And I have found the best way to prevent that matter of factly. I know I had this question also, and I think I addressed it earlier, but I'm gonna say it again, because it's worth mentioning again. Um, Use a finer grit file when you're doing your contouring. When I did the first video, I used a 100 grit file and it was just way too harsh. It did, it took off way too much product. And I've learned that using a finer grit file really makes a huge difference. So if you're using like a 100 grit file or even a 150 grit file and you're noticing that you're a little heavy handed and you're removing too much product, switch to a higher grit file. The higher the grit, the more finer the file. So if you're using a 150, move up to a 180. If you're using a 180, move up to a 240. And that may significantly help you reduce the risk of filing off your color. I'm gonna finish up my prep by giving my nails a slight buff. Um, my other nails didn't really need the buff. Ooh, hiccup, excuse me. <laughs> my other nails didn't need the buff because they all came out pretty smooth and I just had to do this one just to make sure everything was smooth and even and you're gonna see when i put a little oil over it it is pretty much undetectable and that's because i filed around the lift blended it all in and i used the same color that i had on already so that was a lot we went through a lot today <laughs> to those of you who have made it through the entire video I applaud you and thank you for sticking around and watching this whole production. This was really everything. This is the good, the bad, and the little bit of ugly that happens when I do a full Manny start to finish. I hope you guys took something away from this. Give me a thumbs up if you did. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day and I will catch you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye.